So I'm Mirna Gelman, and I'll say a tiny bit about myself as well, just to give you a place setting. Um, after falling in love with filmmaking, I decided to try my hand, and I thought, why not start with the end? So I made a film about death. I thought, I'll have to die someday. I'm naive, I haven't experienced it at all. I can ask all the naive questions I want to ask. So that was my first film documentary, which was a brilliant experience. So I speak as a filmmaker mostly. I want to say a few things about storytelling and then three directions that I would wish for our future of, of storytelling. And I wanted to go after Matthew because I agree that um, storytelling is a roadmap to our morality. It's a mirror to our society. It tells us who we are, what we're learning at the moment as individuals and as a society. And I separate it from entertainment. <coughs> Some entertainment has no storytelling in it. Most storytelling has entertainment in it, but you know, not always. So I think storytelling has never changed, will never change. It is always the mirror of who we are and giving us the boundaries and the space where we can become, if the stories are good enough. Um, I also remembered just earlier um, that we need storytelling much more than we know. Um, I remember going to Wisma Mulia to visit Patricia Lacey, who a lot of you will know. And I remember her saying um, she's ready to die, she wants to die, she's still alive. That was 2007. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's already a story in itself. And uh, she's telling me she got rid of all her material possessions, except maybe for one old chair. And she kept her music and her films and her photos probably. So <coughs> memories and stories and music are what is important at the end of everything. And I was touched by that. Uh, and I think we need to remember that storytelling is actually much deeper than we realize. Even yesterday, coming back from the beach, the driver put a, a film, a comedy, and it allowed everybody to feel together. That first laughter we all had uh, to sort of recover from a day that was a little bit difficult uh, was magical to me as a filmmaker. I, I saw the power of film. So those are the, the three things I wanted to say about storytelling. Uh, and the three directions I would wish for for ourselves are um, uh, that the future is as broad as Mimi wishes it, that her niece and her son and herself and all the other Mimis in the world can recognize themselves in some story out there, some fiction story. So we have the model of Hollywood that has found a beautiful way of telling stories. Uh, I would now like the Hollywood model to be made in uh, Nepal and in Mexico and in, by mentally ill people, by, by any voice. And what I love is that technology is making that possible. I've learned during this congress about drone filmmaking. Isn't that a nicer way to use a drone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not another story. <laughs> There's a whole yeah, before. Never move, yeah. move your chair. Yeah, don't. Don't, 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 don't move your chair. Don't get rocky. Don't get rocky in this room. And all those technologies mean that the beauty we see in the Hollywood model, so that beautiful crane shot that shows you whatever film location you have and expands your feeling, anybody can have now. So I'm assuming all these young people and technologically challenged people will learn the skill and eventually in 10 years time you will see and, and experience very different films. Yeah. The next challenge is how will you find them? Because there will be low budget uh, made somewhere in the world, maybe not translated, but they will be brilliant. But they will be surrounded by all this rubbish um, and some of the Facebook and some of the YouTube is really rubbish. So the next direction I would like for storytelling is uh, that a few people find in their hearts that they want to host and gather around them or find a way to say, here's my website and here are all the lovely films about tango dancing that I've found around the world <laughs> or the, the, the films about optometry that inspire this whole profession or films about sugar refining. Who knows, but it will be small interests that people have gathered quality films around that interest, or the other model, very broad interest, but people who have gone and found the films of a similar ilk of, uh, of a very broad, uh, broad topics. So that's my second hope, so accessible. 
the third one is a bit um, different. It's not about fiction. It's not about documentary almost. Uh, it's about news stories. Uh, two years ago, I wanted to make a film about one of my clients in the world where I earn my living, the International Committee of the Red Cross, and I started reading a lot about the subject. I read one very um, important book, I think, for everybody, called Complex Emergencies by David Keane, and he actually says the story of war is a, is a lie. Very often war is declared in order to kill off certain populations, to move people from farming land that is valuable, where you could extract oil, to have a chance to stop the economic development of a country so it doesn't become too democratic and the middle class does not emerge. And I think that is the most important storytelling that needs to change. We need to demand a different type of news mm -hmm. where experts who already in international development, in international relations circles, can interpret the news completely differently to what we're fed, um, give us those, that story. So that's my future. I'll just finish with a little bit of the present, not to demotivate you, but because I think it's comical. Top 25 grossing films this year. <laughs> Iron Man 3, Despicable Man Me 3, Fast and Furious 6, Gravity, uh, The Hobbit, Frozen, The Wolverine, G.I. Joe, The Hangover Part 3, The Great Gatsby, The Good Day to Die Hard, and so on, The Smurfs 2. There were five superhero films, 16 sequels, reboots, prequels, or remakes, and six based on original ideas. So that's Hollywood today. Also, you'd be surprised to know uh, between 1991 and the year 2000, 14% of spec scripts, so new scripts arriving to producers on the off chance that they can sell them, were made by women. Uh, and we'll be, you'll be very pleased to know that that percentage has reduced in the, since then to 9%. Uh, between 2010 and 2012. And I didn't want to come across like a hard-nosed feminist. I wanted to come across like a soft-hearted woman who'd like to switch on the TV and have a film that represents me from time to time. And interestingly, 52% of, um, of cinema goers are women because we accompany children to the cinema. And the last bit of data, um, I thought, oh well, this year's film is a bad time for Hollywood. They're not very inspirational, and TV is doing great things. So let's just look at, look at all-time top-grossing films, because then there must be more of the films I like. And I, I went down the list until I could find films that were targeted at women only, I thought. Because truly, we are half of the population. Um, it took me till number 88 to find one that was actually for women, and that's Mamma Mia, even though it's for everybody. The second one was number 121, 121, and that was Ghost. And I gave up on looking further down the list. I thought, that's weird. That's really weird. So I miss that as a person. And I hope I'll contribute. My future of storytelling is to contribute my sort of films. But I do hope that the three hopes I have and wishes for the industry do happen. Thank you.